You know, I recently heard that Quentin Tarantino decided that his 10th and final film, The Film Critic, is no longer going to be his 10th or final film. While famously the director has stated that he's got 10 films in him and then he is done, I think we're all highly anticipating what this final version of Quentin Tarantino's cinematic universe could be. And sometimes for us to get a good idea of what's to come, it's best to look back on what's already been done. Hello friends and welcome back to Scene Breakdown and today's episode is going to be a lot of fun because we are going to be breaking down the iconic Jack Rabbit Slims scene from Pulp Fiction. I have been wanting to cover this scene for a long time. There's just so much to it, you know, and it's one of those scenes that really helps make the entire movie. And much like every other scene we break down, it's a scene that almost didn't happen. No kid, I didn't know that. So, if you're a fan of Pulp Fiction, or you just want to see us break down one of the most cinematic scenes in Hollywood movie history, then like the video and, you know, subscribe. Okay, I am too excited. So, my name's Kier with Joe Blow Originals, and you are watching Scene Breakdown. Let's go. 1994's Pulp Fiction, written and directed by the great Quentin Tarantino, and of course starring the likes of John Travolta, Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman, Bruce Willis, Christopher Walken, Quentin Tarantino himself, I could go on. The whole point is, this movie has a stacked cast. It's a movie that follows multiple people on seemingly unrelated journeys that eventually all intertwine into one Pulp Fiction story. This is one of those movies that's brilliant for a lot of reasons, and a big part of that is the writing and, of course, the incredible direction. If you revisit this movie, there are no shortage of quotable moments, and just about every scene could be considered iconic on its own. But we are going to be talking about the Jack Rabbit Slim scene, and why? Because to me, this is the scene that really makes the movie. In fact, would you believe me if I told you that this is also the most expensive scene in the movie? if you don't count whatever Christopher Walken charged just to show up for that one monologue. His ass. Okay, so context for this scene. John Travolta plays a hitman for the mob, okay? His name's Vincent Vega, and he's been asked by his boss to take his boss's wife, Mrs. Wallace, played by Uma Thurman, out on the town for a good time while Mr. Wallace is away. The place that Mrs. Wallace wanted to go is a place called Jack Rabbit Slims, and, uh... Let's get into the scene. So that's Quentin Tarantino's actual 64, I think it's a Chevelle Malibu, that red color. Uh, that was his actual car that they used for this movie. So the budget for this movie wasn't as high as you might think. Quentin Tarantino at this point was still a relatively new Hollywood director. Uh, the budget for this movie was $8 million, and about $5 million of those dollars went to getting the incredible cast that this movie has. And of that remaining budget, the majority of it, I think about $150,000, went to filming this one scene. This is Jack Rabbit Slims. An Elvis man should love it. That's actually a callback to a deleted scene from earlier, where Uma Thurman's character Mrs. Wallace says that there are two kinds of men, Elvis men and Sinatra men. I myself am a Sinatra man. God, the cinematography and the 4K of this movie, which is what we're watching now, is so good and so crisp. 94 this movie was made 20 30 years ago oh my god 30 years ago <sighs> now john travolta's character uh vince vega is a heroin addict in the movie and in order to kind of get that vibe and that demeanor john travolta hung out with and kind of studied actual heroin addicts and the way he moves throughout this movie he does seem a little bit zombie like he's not all the way there and he's a little sweaty, you know, he doesn't, oh, he never looks fully comfortable. He always looks a little uncomfortable. And I think that's kind of part of it. What do you think? I think it's like a wax machine with a pulse. And Uma Thurman wasn't even gonna be in this movie. I feel like that's always one that comes up with these scene breakdowns. There's always somebody who was offered the role and turned it down and then eventually came around and did it. Uh, that was Uma Thurman for this film. And almost John Travolta, he was actually offered uh, like he was just coming off of Look Who's Talking, which was kind of a comeback for John Travolta's career. And I think he was offered this role or a role in From Dusk Till Dawn. 
and this is the one he went with, which I like, but you gotta admit it would have been cool to see him in From Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> Before we continue with our video, here's a reminder to click the Store tab on any of our Joe Blow channels and browse our collection of the latest and freshest designs in our merch store. Go get you some. Hi, I'm Buddy. What can I get you? Steve Buscemi playing Buddy Holly. <laughs> okay, and we're about to get into the uh, $5 shake debacle. <laughs> $5 shake. How do you want that shake? Martin and Lewis or Amos and Andy? Martin and Lewis. So he asked if she wanted her shake Amos and Andy or Martin and Lewis, which is a reference to Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis, who were two white men. So that would be a vanilla milkshake. And Amos and Andy were two black men. So that would be a chocolate milkshake. I don't know if that's problematic in today's world, but I do know that that's a very clever way to incorporate the 50s vibe into that restaurant. So that's five dollars. You don't put bourbon in or nothing? No. <laughs> You don't put bourbon in it or nothing? Could you, um, roll me one of those, cowboy? You can have this one, cowgirl. And did you know that Pulp Fiction, being that this movie came out in 1994, this was one of the very first films to ever use the internet as a means of promotion, which I think is really sick. I mean, thinking about now, the internet is everything. This was one of the first movies to do it. Fox, as in we're a bunch of foxy chicks. Force, as in we're a force to be reckoned with. And five, as in there's one, two, three, four, five of us. I read somewhere that there are an accumulated 265 F words <laughs> used in this movie. God damn, it's a pretty fucking good milkshake. Told you. I don't know if it's worth five dollars, but it's pretty fucking good. <laughs> Maybe we should have sat in Monroe section. Would you like some coffee? Which one? There's two Monroe's. No, there's not. Perfect opportunity yeah, for Monroe. Travolta to show off his knowledge of that 50s movies kind of a quentin tarantino staple maybe a little bit of character projection there it doesn't sound like the usual mindless boring getting to know you chit chat that sounds like you actually have something to say uma thurman in this movie is brilliant and it kind of is a performance that we never saw from her again even in later tarantino films like kill bill she was doing a different level of performing for that movie because it was a completely different kind of movie this movie, she's very subdued and very cold, and she doesn't break eye contact, but she's charming. She's kind of got like a serpentine sociopath thing going on, and I think that that adds a lot to the to the Mia Wallace character. Want to dance? No, 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 no. I do believe Marcellus, my husband, your boss, told you to take me out and do whatever I wanted. Now I want to dance. I want to win. I want that trophy. Right. So dance good. All right. <laughs> I love that line. It's also a little bit ironic because uh, John Travolta was a tremendous dancer. You know, his career had kind of given him the opportunity to become a very choreographed performer. And uh, in real life, Uma Thurman was extremely nervous about doing this scene with John Travolta because he's so good at dancing. This is, um, Chuck Berry. I think the song's called You Never Know. You Never Can Tell. That's what it is. Classic couple's Halloween costume as well, I reckon. Right? The uh, the Vega and Wallace Jackrabbit Slims deal where you're just wearing a, a bolo tie and no shoes. Of course, no shoes, right? This is Tarantino we're talking about here. <laughs> uh, part of this, while they're doing that twist, I think it's actually this right here. Uh, was directly stolen from another movie. I think this was um, a Fellini movie or something that they stole that from. Oh, it's so iconic. It's hard for me to give commentary sometimes because I'm reliving the first time I saw this scene. It does kind of make you want to move too. Now this was a long scene, so I did have to chop around some of the stuff that we didn't have time for, just that I didn't have commentary on, but this is a remarkable movie scene. It's just good dialogue, great camera work, good needle drop. It's kind of got all the elements of an exciting Hollywood movie. It's a wonderful scene inside of a wonderful movie. And actually, Quentin Tarantino talked about the idea he had to do a movie with uh, Vince Vega and Vic Vega, who's Mr. Blonde from Reservoir Dogs. 
those two are brothers in this Quentin Tarantino universe, and uh, there was a movie plan called Double V Vega that was going to follow the two of those guys, and I think that would have been amazing to see, because those are two of the greatest Quentin Tarantino characters ever created, aside from maybe like Django. Anyway, guys, that is the scene. That is some trivia on the film and on the making of this incredibly iconic scene. But let me know down below what you thought of it. Also, let me know what your favorite Pulp Fiction scene is, because there's a lot of good ones. Of course, make sure you like the video if you did like it. Make sure you're subscribed for the best in movie content. And if you know somebody who might like this kind of video, feel free to share it around. We would appreciate it. I'm Kier with Joe Blow Originals. Have a good night, everyone. Hey.